You guys, this is literally one of the best videos I put out this year. I'm so excited to share it with you. It goes over so much, it covers so much. I'm very excited to launch this video with you guys. And we're also giving away a Dogtra 280C remote collar. That's right, the collar that I use on all the dog training videos that I do, me and my friends over at Dogtra are giving one of those away. And we're also giving away some free swag in this video. Why? Because we just hit 200,000 subscribers here on YouTube. You guys are the best. We're doing a giveaway. This video is absolute fire. Let's go. Now I know you guys are probably asking yourself, why is this video one of your favorites? It's, it's with the German Shepherd, go figure. And this dog and this owner are disconnected in some ways. And a lot of people struggle with that disconnection. And that disconnection has a part to do with so many different things that people deal with. Anxiety, pulling on the leash, heal, relationship building. We're gonna be covering body language, how to reduce anxiety, how to reduce stress. There's so much, I, I don't know what it is about this session, but there's so much packed in it. And I'm really excited to introduce you to you guys. So let's just cut to the chase and get right into the video. Here we go. All right, so now I wanna teach you how to develop a better relationship with the dog. Um, it obviously starts here, but it definitely isn't fixed or ends here. It, it, it is, all of that stuff goes home with you. In the car, on vacation, at the house, outside, all of that stuff. So I'm gonna work with him for a second and I'm gonna go over some really key indicators of how, how these things are created as well as how we can try to start grinding them away. Right. We're gonna start saying break to break, okay? Um, so when you're asking him to do stuff, be very binary with him. Uh -uh, sit, just like that. So remember earlier when, I, when you asked him to sit and then he kind of outside, I think he got up, that's gonna be, become very problematic. So watch, he's a ticking time bomb. He's just waiting to get up. In a couple seconds, he'll start walking away and doing what he wants. And a lot of that is created uh, through conditioning. He's been allowed to do that with you, therefore he'll do it with you know anybody else. So you, see, so you see mental and physical stuff. Mentally, nervous, 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 nervous. The physicality comes up, his breathing rate starts going, he get, and then boom, he gets up, and now he's gotta go to you. So if I let him go, he's gonna go right to you. So this is a very good behavioral case to really study. So what I'm gonna do, Diesel, sit. So you see how I got his attention? He's whining, oh God, oh God, oh God. What's that? Sit? I don't, I, do I know that? Bam! Oh, yeah, sit. Right? And now he's a little bit better, right? So my point is, is when you ask a dog to do something, follow through. So before, remember, a couple different times we let him just walk away. Don't do that with him. You tell him what he can and can't do throughout his life. So in other words, lots of structure. So, Tizo, sit. Good sit. Good job, buddy. Good. Good. And again, just practicing this calm sit is working on that anxiety. It's also working on the obedience, but it's also working on the anxiety. Good. Okay, now I want you to work on that. Okay. Good, so put him back. So there, let's work on this. This is good. So we're taking something as simple as the sit and we're reprogramming it. So the micro is, is he's learning the sit stay, but he's also learning how to live without you. Right. So that you almost have to force him to live without you. So this is stuff you want to do throughout the day at your house. So put him in sit. Sit, please. So just put him in a regular sit. Good. Now just tell him, just tell him to stay. 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 Good. All right. So let me help you here. So what you want to do is when you ask a dog to do something, you're really telling them you're not asking them. So voice inflection, as you know, is huge with how you do stuff. Just like with kids, right? It's not soft, it's, it's, it's you're, you're asking a question, right? So go to your room versus go to your room. So same thing with stay. So when you say Diesel, stay, it's, <laughs> he's like, me? <laughs> That's exactly how you don't wanna do it. So you don't wanna do this. Diesel, stay, Diesel, stay, because you're basically click, 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 boom. Just like we saw back over here. So make sure when you ask him to do something, Diesel, stay. You move to the side, if he gets up, correct him. 
The other thing you should start doing is start to step away from multiple layers of reinforcements. So these will stay, 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 click. Boom, you, you, you boil over. Just be very neutral because the more neutral you are, there's no expectation of anticipatory stuff. So we go stay, stay, click, 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 boom, every time. So when you actually need him to stay, he's gonna go, right when you get here, I come. So just be, you may sit for two seconds, you may sit for two hours, but at the end of the day, it's me. So what does that, what does that do for you and your dog? Your obedience is great, but your relationship is better, right? Because he's like, I'm just gonna stay until you say. He's not looking at that like, you know, type stuff. Right, right. So ask him to sit again, and I'll walk you through it. Good. So the other thing I would do too, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm not nitpicking, I'm just trying to help you. So when you ask him to sit, when you're healing with him, you'll notice that if you put back pressure, if you put back pressure on him, it's kind of like horsemanship pressure. If you put back pressure, he's gonna do this. So if, try to have him, like before you were asking him to heal, and then you stop, and you kind of gave him pressure, and he went back and so did you. So just stop and then ask him to sit, and if he doesn't, do a little pressure up instead. So why don't you just reset him really quick and try that sequence again. All right, you guys, it's time for the giveaway. Let's give away a Dog Tour 280C. All you guys have to do to enter to win is leave your dog's name letter by letter by letter in the comments below. Like this video right now, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to automatically get entered to win, and I'm gonna pick somebody within 48 hours. Ready, set, go. Pressure up. Good. Good. But I shouldn't say together, right? You mean I twice? Said, no, I said it together. I like put pressure, but I said set up the same. Yeah, you, what, well, what you want to do, it's a good question. So what you want to do is ask first, and then any type of pressure you give a dog, whether it's this, this, or this, it always comes secondary for non-compliance. So you don't want to do it at the same time. I just know it right, right. So great question, great thing to point out. Don't, don't do that, because then it gets confusing to the dog. They're like, you're gonna correct me anyway, so I might as well just not do it, <laughs> right? So great question, so it's Diesel sit. If he doesn't, pressure. The faster you give the pressure, the faster he'll learn he's gotta sit when you tell him. Um, but don't, because the next question I get is like, well, what if it takes him 30 seconds? Well, I, I always tell people like, we're, you know, we're not training robots here, we're not in competitive obedience. So, you ask him to sit if he doesn't, give him a correction. If, if he's struggling with it, then you can do another verbal, but try to say it once to get him to sit. Now, now that he's in a great sit, now try to do your stay again. So remember, don't ask, tell. Sit. sit. He's got his eye on the door. Sit. It's okay. And then stay. Stay. So, so take, your, take your end of the leash. Tell him to stay. So say, Diesel, stay. Diesel, stay. Good. Now st stop. Put him back in sit. Sit. I'm going to help you through this. Diesel, sit. Be correction again. So after the first sit, correction. Now, turn and face him. S now tell, no, right, right, right in line with him. Now tell him to stay. Stay. Good. Drop the leash a little bit. Now stop. Good. Now walk towards him again. Now tell good stay. So you're going to stay. So I would be, stay. now stop again. Good, good. Now walk backwards, tell him to stay again. Stay. Nope. Sit. It's okay. So here, let me, sh let me show you an example. Yeah. Okay, break. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's hard to like, you, you're doing good. It's hard to listen. It's, you're being Pinocchio for me and it's hard. So here's what I want you to do. <clears throat> Diesel, sit. Good sit. So it's gonna be good command, whatever it is. So the reason why I had you do this is because he wants to face you. He wants to be a part of everything with you. He's insecure and nervous and anxious without you. So if you start doing this, right, sit. He's gonna start getting nervous. <clears throat> so what I, what I tell, try to tell people is, here, Diesel, stay. Come out, test him, he does good. Good stay. So it's not, it's not gonna be stay again because he's already doing that. It's gonna be good command. Good stay. And the other thing I would also point out is be careful how much physical affection you give him. 
because that stimulation could make him jump up because you're giving him too much. He gets too excited, essentially. So here, good stay. So now if he gets up, I'm just gonna catch him with my leash and correct him back into a sit. Just like he's about to do. <laughs> so again, ah, sit. So here, this is good distance. Good stay. So what I like to do, go to the dog and pay them in the desired position you're looking for to reinforce it. Good stay. So that was like perfect. Not too much, but just good stay, bud. All right, you guys, giveaway number two with the new No Bad Dog, Tom Davis Signature Series, Dog Training is Art on the Back. I haven't even dropped these on any other platform. I'm doing it for you guys because we just hit 200,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. We're gonna give away two of these. All right, so all you guys have to do, screenshot this however you're watching, listening to this thing, and then upload it to Instagram on your story. And all you have to do is tag me and I'll repost it. And I'm gonna pick two people in 48 hours after this video is launched. Okay, break, yes, good job, big man. Good boy. So what I'm doing is very simple. It's just a very a matter of fact. It's gonna be difficult for you because you haven't done it like this before. So Diesel, sit. Good sit. Diesel, stay. Good stay, buddy. And then I could start, it, start advancing this by, so you wanna watch, Watch his body language. When he starts looking around, he's thinking about getting up. So be prepared. And what I, again, we have three points of pressure right now. Verbal with voice inflection, physical, and body. So if he gets up, it's gonna go verbal, physical, body. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, break. Good, so somebody came in behind him and he stayed and I broke him. So do you see how I'm doing the break? Very different from so it's, it's, and again, it's like math class. Okay, yeah, six minus six, right? And then recess, woo, kickball. Very, very, very different. And it's the same thing with the dog. And the reason why that's so important for any dog, but especially a dog with anxiety, is because you're like, you gotta work. Okay, now you can do what you want. Okay, so I'm gonna have you try that again. Good. So basically what I do is now slide your hand the other way and I just hold it right there. So when you need to correct him, zoop, Right up, you pulley system. So when, when he, if and when he gets up, you go up, physical pressure, walk right into him. He's looking at me like, don't teach her this stuff. Okay. <laughs> physical pressure and then verbal pressure. Ah, 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 stay, okay. So just walk right towards him again, good, and tell him good stay. Good stay. Good, now walk backwards one more time. Stay. Catch him. Uh, there, perfect. Stay. See? So once you start getting used to that and you match it up, walk right at him, correct him, and he, he got it quick. He, good. So you don't have to pop him when you give him yeah. a break. With the break command, do this. So, and it's it's instinctual because right now you're you're used to kind of using the, the collar to correct him. But just when you, when you tell him to break, what I do is I touch the dog and then I move away and I change my voice. So just like with punishment-based pressure, I'm doing, I guess, reward-based pressure, if you will. So I'm decompressing, I'm like letting all that go. So when we're healing and we're working, it's tight, militant, pay attention. Now when I do break, I go, I go three things. I go boom, break, boom. So I move away, I high pitch uh, voice inflection, and I touch the dog just to let him know like you're done, okay? So that's one thing you can, you can try, is just to like, because here's what happens, is a lot of people will go break, or even break. <laughs> And so that kind of defeats the purpose of teaching the dog that we're entirely done with working at that time. So you change it like immensely to really tell the dog that something has changed. And so I go break like that. And so I break it down into three different things, but it's really break, super easy. So anyway, so whenever you ask him to do something, never let him, that's what's gonna create that anxiety. That's what's gonna create because you have an animal and no matter what in the animal kingdom, the, almost every single animal in the animal kingdom is born and then help being raised by mom or dad or both for the majority of you know the animals out there and so when when they go to the human race and we go do what you want and with dogs eight to nine weeks after the mom works so hard to teach them wrong from right and they're very like and then we go you're free do what you want here's a comfy bed here's this here's that and then they go well this is different 
right? And then we start to see, but what do I, but what do, I do? How do I do it? You're not going to tell me? You're, I can do whatever I want? If we took, if we gave kids in high school, middle school, two, well, let's say middle school, two weeks to do whatever they want, the first week they're going to be like, heck yeah, this is the best. The second week they're going to be like, can I have this? When's dinner? When? They need that in order to survive, both mentally and physically. So we've got to remember that when you tell him to do something, it's got to be on your terms to release him. Everything. Okay, so give him a little break. We're taking our shot, bring what you got. We're going all the way to the top. We will hear the sound of one million people screaming our names when we're backstage. We'll play loud, surfing the crowd. Everybody's jumping around.